Getting the best sound experience out of your PlayStation 5 should be a mostly automated process, but how you set up your sound system matters, and there are some tricky settings in the audio menu, so let's talk about that. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and just like the Xbox Series X, most of the settings in your video and audio settings menu should be done mostly automatically, but that doesn't always work the way it should, and there are definitely some opportunities to optimize a few things, so I'm gonna run you through a few different setup scenarios, then we'll go through everything in the sound menu on the PS5 and explain how some of these settings will affect your experience. Before we get into it though, what's your preferred sound setup? Are you more of a headphones person? Do you do a sound bar or receiver and speakers? Or are the TV speakers good enough? Let me know about that down in the comments. And while you're there, please like and subscribe because we are gunning for a million subs and you can help make that happen. Also, as always, we have affiliate links to the products we talk about in the description if you'd like to support this channel that way. Thank you, I mean it. Now, let's get to it. Before we dig into the settings, let's talk about some potential setup scenarios. If you're just using your TV speakers, you really don't need to do much at all. The PS5 knows that and automatically picks the most basic settings. You might want to check your TV's audio settings though, because sometimes the TV comes with virtual surround sound turned on, and you might want to experiment with having it on or off to see what sounds best to you. If you're using headphones, just plug them into the PS5 controller or connect via Bluetooth. The PS5 should detect whether they have a microphone or not, but there are some mic and headset settings we'll look at in just a moment. For sound bars, I usually recommend connecting directly to the TV and then running an HDMI cable from the ARC or eARC port of the TV down to the sound bars ARC or eARC HDMI connection. Make sure you have CEC and ARC or eARC enabled on the TV itself to make sure that this all goes right. Now in some cases, you might want to connect your console directly to your soundbar. Maybe you're short on ports in your TV or something, but because few soundbars support the kind of bandwidth the PS5 needs, I think connecting directly to the TV is the way to go for like 95% of the time. Now, if you're using an AV receiver, again, I think it may be best to connect the console to the TV and run out of the ARC or eARC port to the same on the receiver, and for the same reasons I just mentioned with the soundbar. However, if you have a new receiver that supports HDMI 2.1, you can connect to the receiver and run sound out to your TV's ARC or eARC port. If your receiver has a game mode, turn it on to reduce lag. And if you're noticing that not all of your PS5's video capabilities are enabled, we've got a video about that, linked below by the way, then it is possible your receiver isn't doing the job it says it can do. There may be a firmware update that fixes that, but you'll want to reach out to the receiver manufacturer and get that squared away. With that stuff out of the way, let's look at the sound menu together. To get there, go to the top right of the PS5's home screen and click the little gear wheel icon, then click down to sound. Here we see our microphone settings. This is pretty simple. If you plug a headset into the PS5 remote and it detects a mic, then it should switch automatically to the headset mic. But if it doesn't, this is where you can toggle. If you find the mic in the PS5 controller works better than your own, this is also where you would override the settings. Further down is microphone level, which just adjusts how loud you come across to others online. And then one more step down, you can decide to keep the mic on or off when you log in, and for privacy, you might want it off. But for convenience, leave it on. And this last option lets you switch to mute when you start a chat or a broadcast, or stick with your default setting from just above. Now for the meaty stuff in the audio output menu here. First is output device, which is currently set to HDMI device as we would want it, and it is currently set to TV. You'll notice that some stuff below the HDMI device type menu is grayed out, but we do have a headphone section here that activates when headphones are detected. Output to headphones lets you toggle between sending all audio to headphones or just chat audio. Enable 3D audio allows the PS5 to work at special Sony surround sound magic made for headsets, and then you get a chance to adjust the 3D audio intensity to your liking. If you go a little further down, you'll see some general audio stuff like home screen music on or off and sound effects on or off. Pick what you like there, but just below this is an important one. You have the option for linear PCM, Dolby Bitstream, and DTS Bitstream. Now for TV speakers and headphones, you want linear PCM. That is unless you're connecting some HDMI headphones, in which case you could switch to Bitstream for Dolby or DTS if your headphones will do the decoding. Let's switch things to soundbar. And again, most of this stuff is grayed out, but if we go down to audio format, again, we have a choice to make. 
If your soundbar supports Dolby or DTS, then I would suggest switching to either Dolby or DTS. The reason being is that you want the soundbar to use its decoder to get the best Dolby or DTS experience. Let's say you are using the Vizio Elevate or M-Series 5.1 soundbar. Both of those support Dolby, so I wanna make sure this is set to Dolby. If you have a very basic soundbar that doesn't do Dolby or DTS, stick to linear PCM and you'll be just fine. Now let's tell it we're using an AV amplifier and we get a lot more options. Before we get to this stuff under the AV amplifier section, let's again go down to audio format first. In the case of an AV receiver, I think, again, you should choose Dolby or DTS. Unless you're using a stereo receiver with HDMI that doesn't decode Dolby or DTS, then I don't see a value to using linear PCM. Yes, it is technically uncompressed audio, and that sounds like premium, but it also uses more bandwidth, and it doesn't allow you to get Dolby or DTS processing in there, which I have found is usually a superior surround sound experience. At any rate, you aren't going to get Dolby Atmos unless you're using the Blu-ray player, but even just for that, I'd select Dolby. Now, if we bounce back up here to the AV amplifier section, you'll see we have the option to select two channel, 5.1 or 7.1. This makes sense if you chose linear PCM down below because it changes the amount of audio information going to the receiver. But if you select Dolby or DTS, your receiver is getting the full load of audio information already. So I would have grayed this out when choosing Bitstream, but Sony hasn't chosen to go that route. Also, I'm not sure how I feel about this adjust speaker positions menu. This is essentially information that you put into your receiver or which the receiver sets up automatically if you use built-in calibration systems like Yamaha has Wipow or Odyssey on a Denon or Marantz receiver. At any rate, if you feel like you can accurately determine the angles of your speakers relative to your listening position and put that in here, go for it. And hey, if you want to do an A-B comparison and tell us about it, I'd love to hear about your experience. Finally, just to be thorough, I'll pop into the volume section and here we could adjust headphone audio levels and also the level of the little speaker in the controller itself, which puts out sound effects and such. Hopefully this has been a helpful guide to all the PS5 audio settings and now you are rocking the best possible sound for games, streaming apps, and Blu-ray discs. Thanks as always for watching everyone. If you made it to the end of this video, tell me what you think about some of these guides we're doing and if we were able to help you. Another friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And here's two other videos I think you'll like.